Hi YouTube friends, this is Fossilsaurus. Um, this is another non-unboxing. Um, but it is still in the box, but it's something I've had for quite a while and it's already been opened and it's just been put back in the box, which is pretty much how I store things until whenever it is I'm able to put stuff up on my wall. Uh, also another thing, I was doing some yard work the other day and apparently I used some mulch which stains the heck out of your fingernails. So even after scrubbing and scrubbing, they don't look great. So I'm gonna try and keep them out of frame. If they get in frame, I apologize. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to try and start anything that's already open. I'm gonna start having it, the box already open like that because multiple times I believe I have forgotten and ended up with my um, address and name and so on on here, which I'm trying not to do, so. Now, when this originally came, the packaging was much better. It was much more uh, even on bottom and on top, and there was more packaging in here. Um, and this, of course, was much, much more properly done. I, this was, as I've said before, haphazardly put back together, or haphazardly wrapped up again, rewrapped. And here we go. One side, that's the bad side. And the other, the good side. Uh, I'm actually going to just put something under there to support it because I don't want it to be resting on the teeth here. Uh, a lot of the fossils I have are much more sturdy than this. Um, a lot of things from Morocco and Africa and areas like that from certain sites um, are can be a lot more delicate than others so sometimes you see me tapping on them and so on doing this moving around I'm gonna try not to do much more than gently touch this one and probably not much more than that I mean I, I don't I'm not gonna lift it up or turn it over or anything anymore so uh, you may not know what this is some of you might recognize from the teeth but this is uh, Basilosaurus uh, also called Zuglodon uh, which it should be named, uh, but unfortunately the, um, the rules of the zoological nomenclature is whatever it was named first sticks. Uh, Basilosaurus means king lizard. This is a whale. Um, Zuglodon means yoke teeth, which is because of the teeth. Uh, but that was named second because they thought it was a reptile at first because it, the skull looks pretty similar to Mosasaur skulls and such, so they made a mistake in the beginning, and so it has to stick then. So uh, this has been in pop culture too, not only the BBC Chased by Sea Monsters, but also another one of those BBC um, monster, um, walking with monsters or something, there was another, another thing with it in, so some of you may be somewhat familiar with these guys. Uh, they're very cool. They were in the Eocene. These guys lived from 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago and sadly were wiped out not by natural cause, well, by natural causes, but not by evolution or so on, just evolving into something else. There was an extinction event. Uh, it was the Eocene Oligocene event and it caused massive climate change. Uh, well, these were whales, they did not have blubber, so the, um, the lowering of the temperature and sea level was just too much for them. Now, these were absolutely massive animals. There were two species, Basilosaurus isis, which is a little bit more uh, common in the fossil trade, and Basilosaurus uh, cetoids which surprisingly, since it's from the United States, is much harder to find. Uh, it's, it actually was so common that they used to use the bones for, to make furniture. So it's very surprising now that the imported ones from Morocco and so on, um, which are much less common than what the cetoids, the American ones used to be, um, are now the common ones that you find for sale. Uh, the two kinds, there's, there's a very small difference in size between them. 
and depending on where you look, um, you will see sometimes them say the different difference, which one is larger. Most places say that the Cetoids, the uh, uh, North American version, is a little bit larger, but both of them are between 50 and 65 feet long. Uh, it's the largest that we know of, uh, which is absolutely massive. These were the largest things since the dinosaurs um, up until the modern great baleen whales. Uh, these were the, a lot of places will call them the first fully aquatic whale, which is not right. It's one of the, and it's the oldest, or the first known, but it is fully aquatically evolved. So fully that even the a few um, evolved forms previously had to uh, still already be uh, fully aquatic. Um, they did have some remnants of feet, uh, but they were totally vestigial, barely sticking out. So these are just the the first known fully aquatic. Uh, but that is very awesome, and um, as you can guess from their teeth, um, they have different kinds of teeth. These uh, that kind of half pyramids, uh, lots of the molars are full pyramids, which they, they're the same on both sides, and they're a little bit bigger. And then the ones towards the front are just peg-like teeth, just, I mean, very normal looking, like equivalent to sperm whale teeth kind of thing. Uh, so they have a very, um, very busy jaw with lots of teeth going on. Uh, this is very near the back of the, of the jaw. The jaw probably goes, uh, for this size, probably six or eight inches further back before it gets to the joint. And probably goes about a foot and a half that way. Very, very long jaws. Um, probably just two more teeth or so, the fully triangular ones, fully uh, pyramidical ones right there before it turns off. Now these guys were absolute top predator. Uh, they ate everything else in the ocean, including um, the Isis, the ones from Morocco and the Tethys Sea. A large part of their diet was other whales, uh, especially um, one called Duradon, which is a very close relative, just much smaller, I think about 25 feet-ish. Uh, and we know from remains from bones that they, th which these guys usually go for the head, which is where the bite, the main bite marks are. Uh, but they just, that is a favorite food of theirs. Um, the only big difference visually is that the Duradons are much smaller, of course, and they're not as skinny for how long they are, for, yeah, for how long they are. These guys were very slender. The Durodon looked much more normal. Um, now, these guys, sadly, that was the end of the line for them. There was no descendants, so this entire line of Archaeocetus uh, died out. Uh, nothing, nothing like them afterwards. Um, closest thing since then is like sperm whales, which is a pretty far jump from these guys. Um, might be a good thing that they're gone, because if these guys, I mean, we wouldn't want them in the ocean the way they were, and we probably wouldn't want them evolved another uh, 40 million years either. <laughs> so, big difference without them being here, uh, and probably a good one. Now, this fossil, absolutely amazing to me. Uh, at first, I was sure there's no way I could afford it, but I immediately fell in love with it. And as I've said before, it doesn't hurt to ask. So this was from somebody I had bought from before, and I just said, heck with it. I asked them, and they agreed, and I, they let me pay this off in installments over nine months. So um, it, far beyond my means of buying at once, but uh, you can usually find very nice people in the trade and if you've worked with them and if you talk to them uh, a lot of times they're very nice people and a lot of times expensive things are hard to sell and hard to move so if they're if you can make a good offer um, and they are willing to I mean if you pay with PayPal you're pretty safe as far as money and so on going back and forth but uh, 
a lot of people I've dealt with are willing to either let you pay in installments or hold it for you for a couple months and let you uh, build up some money. I don't think, I think it would be rare for anybody to, I mean, nine months is a long time. That's the longest by far anybody's been willing to wait. But I've had many people uh, give me a two or three months to pay. So that is the only way I was able to get something amazing like this. Uh, beautiful. Little, like I said, on the delicate side. So it's going to be, um, well, it's going to have a place of honor for sure. Um, it's, I'm going to have to consider how to do it uh, in the safest way. Um, I want it to be on the wall, but if it will be safer, if I can get it sturdy, more sturdy in the cabinet, then that's just what I'll have to do because it's, it's an amazing piece. Um, Basilosaurus, uh, jaw bones and so on are not the hardest thing in the world to find. They're expensive. Um, so monetarily I could not probably replace this, but, uh, I could probably find another one, but Either way, you definitely don't want to take any chances with this. I mean, even if you could afford it and so on, you got to keep in mind that these things survived for, I mean, this one survived for 40 some or 30 to 40 million years. And some things like the Permian fossils, those things survived for hundreds of millions of years. So you got to remember that how unfair that is for it to have survived that long. The fossilization process is, it's almost impossible for it to happen. It's so unlikely. So, but some do make it through and it's just not fair for it to make it all the way through and then for you to break it. So always be careful with everything. Um, um, I have, I've yet to actually break anything. So thank God for that. Um, I do my best and I will continue to do my best. And, uh, there may actually be a couple things I am not comfortable bringing out because of how they are. And I probably will not be even displaying them myself. I'll keep them in a drawer or something. Because sometimes, especially like I said, some African things, they can almost crumble just by touching them. So, But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for letting me show off my beauty here. Um, Please leave me some likes, uh, subscriptions, uh, and please join me next time.